Hi there! Every week on the Soggy Rabbit live stream I show a demonstration of how to do a portrait and it's all mixed up with some fun stuff and shout outs but I also save this video which is the demonstration of how to do the portrait. So here it is. There you go. So this was the finished picture and in this video now where you are is um, where I will show you from start to finish how to do this picture. So I'll take you through all the tools I use, the pencils, the pens, um, and all the techniques, and we'll learn some really interesting things, which I hope will be useful for you, for your drawing, um, whatever you're drawing. So um, it's a lot of fun, but it's also a lot slower than the live one. So if you want to check out the live one, I'll pop it up here, okay? Right, but for people who are really interested in the art and the drawing, this is the video for you, okay? We start all these portraits and um, all sorts of drawings um, with some kind of a sketch underneath, just kind of mapping out the shapes. And I find that a graphite pencil is brilliant for this. It's um, uh, soft. I use, a, I think this is a 6B, um, which means that you don't have to press very hard to make marks on the paper and it also means it rubs off quite easily with that putty rubber that you can see up by the pen on the top right and um, it it just makes a nice soft mark and it also doesn't dent the paper so I'm just looking this is Bruce the blue one and just trying to get those big outline shapes trying to get a sense of the volume of Bruce and um, looking at how big the head is relative to the tail. I've got a couple of reference photos to work from and when um, when you're working like this where, where no one photo is the definitive one it's really useful to try and imagine picking the object up um, or if it's a person try and imagine if they got up off the page would they be about the right level of bulk? Would they be, so in this case, if Bruce was to swim off the page, would Bruce's body and head be about right in relation to the tail? Uh, there's Bruce's eye. You'll notice Bruce's eye has had a little work and um, we're not really talking cosmetic work here. I think um, Bruce apparently had a run in with a dog. So, we'll be doing that a little bit later doing it justice because I'm sure that's part of what makes Bruce special to Zali so again I'm just trying to look at the the bulk of the chin um, and make sure that I've got that the right kind of weight and looking at those creases and looking at how that I just see I can move that front fin forward uh, all these fine adjustments are so easy when you're using soft pencil to sketch first. It's uh, much harder if you um, do them in something more committed, but pencil like this, it's fine. You can relax and just enjoy making marks. Um, looking, I'm always flicking my eyes between the photo and the page. And um, you'll notice I'm holding the pencil fairly far away from the nib. Um, and there's a good reason for that. I find it really helps me not block the page. So if you hold your pencil right at the end, your your hand blocks quite a lot of what you're drawing. And if you hold it further away, you get slightly more sweeping lines. You tend to move more of your arm, um, less of your wrist, which is a really good postural um, expressive line um, feature. And, um, and look at the difference between the two sharks' tails. If you look in the in the reference photos as well, you can see that Tiger's got a much chunkier tail. In fact, Tiger is is a bit chunkier, chunkier nose, chunkier tail. And um, at this point, I'm kind of trying to sort of imagine the structure of the toys. So I'm looking down that seam and seeing how that connects up with the tail, seeing where these uh, where these lines, imagining if those lines kind of traced through the shapes where they would hit. And those are really handy tricks if you're drawing people or animals or anything. Um, try and imagine connecting bits up 
that perhaps aren't actually connected but look for continuing lines now I'm just sort of dotting around the shape trying to look for clues look for things that I can measure against other things look at that dorsal fin pretty much in the middle of the back and be very careful of the curve. The, uh, the nice thing about um, doing this before you ink a picture is that by the time you come to ink the picture, most of the decisions are pretty much made and you can just do fine tuning with the ink pen. So the nice thing about the ink pen is that you're not, you can't then fiddle. Once it's down, it's down and there's no going back. So it's really great for your concentration because you really have to focus when you're using the ink pen. And, um, and pencil, I find pencil very relaxing because you don't, um, you don't have to worry because if it, if it goes wrong, you can just rub it out. Some people like to treat pencils as pens and not use a rubber. That's another way of looking at it, which can be very good. So, I think um, that nose looks as though it's not quite spot on. And if you look at the picture and compare the shark in the photo, I've got a couple of photos there of Tiger. I think I'm going to have to sort that nose out, move in a bit. So if the shape is wrong, in say you're drawing a, a cat and the head looks too big or too small say this head looks too big you've basically got two options either you can make the body bigger or you can shrink the head or you could do a combination of the two so when you're doing a picture and you want it to look like the thing that you have in front of you whether that's a photo or real life if you notice something's wrong or something doesn't look quite right you're probably right it, probably isn't quite right but um, just try, take a moment to think about how you're going to correct it because there's usually a choice of ways and um, it's important not to rush into the first bit of correcting that you see so I'm looking at the balance between the um, head and the tail so even though I'm working on the head, I'm looking at the tail at the same time because it's really good to just always look for things that you can compare when you're drawing and you're trying to get the proportions right. Be very careful there where that um, jaw connects up with the gills. You can see those three gills. And now just look at how that, I'm just measuring that line and making sure that it continues um, either side of the fins it's uh, really good when you're drawing things that overlap each other try and imagine you can see through the front thing and um, draw the back thing in your head continuously and then lay the front thing in front of it and that's what I've tried to do with those fins so now I'm looking at Tiger's nose trying to make sure that's just the right amount of bulbous Just looking at the size of the heads and looking at the size of Bruce's head, thinking is Tiger quite the right shape? And these fine tuning lines are far better done at this point with a pencil. Um, and it's really worth taking the time at this point to get it as close to right as you want your picture to be. So if you want your picture to um, be just a loose impression then it really doesn't matter and um, often your first your first guess is actually very realistic but if you're drawing this sort of drawing I think um, Zali wouldn't be terribly happy if his sharks were slightly the wrong proportions or um, you know the, the body wasn't long enough so I'm just making fine adjustments as I was saying before not adjusting the head too much and not adjusting the tail too much but really what I'm doing is making that body longer and slimmer by making the tail slightly further back 
and at the start of the drawing I've checked that this piece of paper fits very nightly, night, neatly sorry, inside a mount card. So I know that as long as I leave a little bit of breathing space, like a just under a centimetre around the edges, then these sharks will fit perfectly once it's framed. So I'm looking at these seams. It's fantastic when you're drawing toys to look for the seams, look for the structural lines and really try and get them in the right place because they are like the toy's equivalent of a skeleton. So if you're drawing a person or a, a, a mammal or anything with a skull, it's really good to be able to imagine underneath the skin where things are, where are those cheekbones and where are those eye sockets, because that makes a, a great difference to the, um, the finished picture. If there's a really solid sense of the um, underlying structure, and for toys, so much of their character is due to their structure. And when you're drawing anything, it's really worth looking for the structure. So you could almost, with these toys, you could imagine a spine running through them and think, does that, does that connect properly up with the tail? Do they have a sort of flow? Good for drawing imaginary creatures as well. Still, if they're if you're drawing a creature that would have a spine, it's really good to kind of get that mentally in. Now I'm just looking at, I digress, I'm just looking at where those fins intersect with that seam there and um, how it meets the gills. So see I've got it connecting just about with that back gill, the middle to back. And look at the difference in the edge, uh, the shape of the front and the back of the fin. It's quite an angle there. I'm sorry my camera keeps going out of focus, it's trying to follow my hand. So here we are just checking that it fits nicely and I've left a bit of room at the bottom for the title. So now I can get on with the drawing. Not much drawing left to do now, I'll be getting the pen out very soon. getting those folds. You'll see more of those folds with the pen. They're a really good way to um, show the contours, show how things go in front of each other. And they're great for putting shadows in as well. Great for giving something a sense of texture. Sort out Bruce's chin. So I'm just looking at this space here and imagining if that was a a squashed egg, making sure I've got the right size of squashed egg relative to Bruce's head. Again, those sort of measurements, they're quite subtle, but they make such a difference to getting the toy looking like the right toy and not just any old shark that you picked off a shelf. So you can see I've got a very faint line there at the bottom. Um, and I'm just leaving plenty space under the sharks to allow for the title there. Right, we've got to the stage where there's no going back. Once the ink goes on, it's um, on for good. So this is permanent waterproof ink and a traditional dipping pen, which is my weapon of choice. When you first dip the pen in, it tends to have the, when a nib is dry, it doesn't take on very much ink. So I usually give it a second dip before I start the drawing. And then you can see it's nice and juicy. Don't want any on your hand, obviously. So at this point, I'm really looking at the shapes and getting ready to commit, thinking where's the light coming from? and um, where do I want to start and I want to start somewhere where I can do kind of not my lines tend to be slightly heavy to start with as the pen is freshly dipped in ink so I won't go to a very exposed bit um, looks like I might actually need to dip again in a second probably still slightly dry with that first go 
and really now kind of rehearsing the lines. You can see I'm almost mentally mapping them with the pen before touching the paper and that's a really good trick. When you're using any uh, anything that you're definitely not going to erase, it's a good idea to kind of trace it first without quite touching the paper and your hand sort of learns the direction that you want it to go. So remember I was talking about the contours and the wrinkles. This is a really good trick when you're drawing a person. If you're drawing like a crease in their hand, you can imagine if that was a finger and a thumb, how those creases show a lot about the form. And really they're just a very subtle ingress on the, uh, on the contour on the outside. But they tell you a lot about the shape in, in the middle. Oops, got a hair there. Hairs are a bit of a problem. If you get uh, if you get a bit of fluff on your nib, um, it can go very very thick, and you've lost your picture. Then you have to start again. High risk. That's the excitement of ink. Um, so looking at that fin there, just making sure that that first touch is in the right place. You could see more rehearsing happening. Just making sure that I know where I'm going, so I've kind of got a plan. And it um, might help if I had a bit of ink on the pen as well. <laughs> so when I'm doing that top edge there, that's going to be catching the light. So I don't want to use a fully loaded pen on that top edge, which is why I'm trying it now, because I know there's not much ink on the pen, but there's actually no ink on the pen, so that's no use. So now it's fully loaded, I'm not going to touch that top bit, I'm going to go down here and um, get on with that fin there. And those are sort of, those will be slightly in the shadows and it won't matter if they're quite strong lines. And then as the pen runs out of ink, the lines get slightly thinner and I can use, use it to do the more subtle marks. top of the head. Again looking for the shapes that I can pick out, looking for the things I can be sure of and then if you get the bits you're sure of in, sometimes the bits that seem a bit hard to do at first are more doable. Once you, It's a bit like a puzzle. If you get those, uh, get those edges in and get a few of the big bits sorted you'll find some of those little pieces, there aren't so many little pieces, it's just the same with a the picture. There's always some bits that are easy to measure, maybe positioning the eye relative to the where the mouth joins there and looking at uh, the line of the back, sometimes that's quite easy to find, looking for those long lines. Now these are the shadows, I'm just drawing the shadows behind the teeth there because they need to be dark so that the teeth pop forward. Being very careful about positioning that eye. Needs to be just the right gap between the nose, the forehead and the lips. So those stitches around the eye are quite subtle and they're not really very much uh, darker than, the, um, than Bruce's blue colour. They're just grey rather than blue, so and they're the same kind of value. So I'm certainly not going to go near those stitches with the pen. But um, some of these folds I'm going to put in with the pen, and then they'll be great to uh, use for some shading once I'm going in with the blue. So that's the area where those stitches are going to go, but I'm not going to touch it with the pen. Right, a couple more creases there. And I think that's Bruce pretty much done. So let's have a fresh dip and get on with Tiger. Move in there so you can really see. You can see how wet the nib is. It's really loaded up. Lovely juicy black lines. So where am I going to go with this then? Where do you think? I do try and get that one in early. 
as everything hangs off that uh, that sort of spine and it's uh, it's a stitched line as well in the toy so that's where the you can see there I've alluded to the fact that there's a another side so the seam goes down the middle of Tiger's nose keeping this quite light so I'm finding my way over the shapes and certainly things like seams I don't want to make them too heavy that's why I'm dotting that one now I'm being very careful to try and imagine going round the form and then looking at the photo and then trying to decide where exactly that front fin meets the body and making sure it's just slightly forward of the dorsal fin, the fin on top and making sure that those gills there meet the fin at exactly the right place. So there's the jigsaw puzzle happening again, I've got the gills in and then it's much easier to work out where that um, and there we go, I was just showing you the curves you can see those nice sweeping curves that you get if you rehearse a line so you're more confident with where it's going and then I'm going to take that line you see just through behind there behind that fin making sure that it makes sense I do have a sort of a last ditch um, ability to make slight changes to the ink. You'll see later when I use the white pen that um, I can tone down the ink slightly with some white pen but I try not to really. I don't want it to make the picture too kind of overworked. So um, looking at comparing the thickness of the tail. So you see that Bruce's tail um, there is quite slender but um, Tiger's tail is really quite chunky, so just making sure that by comparison Tiger is right. So that comparison is something you're doing all the time when you're drawing realistically. Comparing volumes, comparing sizes. There's that seam going in. And just looking very carefully how things line up making sure that if I was to pick Tiger up off the page that tail would feel like Tiger's tail would sit at the right place and be the right curve of shape and that tail has got that seam there as well so I'm going to map that in and see how that joins up with the back seam right so we've skipped on a little bit and I've done some shading and um, that's just to make the toys have a little bit of weight so I've just put in a little bit of shadow um, in the places mostly where they'll touch the surface that they're sitting on the notional surface and I'm using a putty rubber to get rid of those pencil lines so when um, when I'd done the shadows I then went and had a cup of tea left the picture for 20 minutes and then made sure that that ink was fully dry before I got that putty rubber out. So there we go. The um, pencil lines are pretty much gone. And I'm ready to start thinking about colour. So this is this next stage is called blocking in. So I'm going to be using um, a sort of stony cream colour and I'll probably use the same colour I think for Bruce's underneath and Tiger and it doesn't have to be exactly the right colour. More important that it's roughly the right value that means the lightness or darkness of it. Um, but uh, both of them are quite a sort of warm colour and this is quite a warm cream. It's not a bluey cream, it's like a kind of almost browny cream, sort of orangey browny. And uh, you can see that the paper is quite a cool colour, that grey 
so it makes this look even warmer by comparison. But this isn't by any means the lightest colour I have. I'm going to save that for things like Bruce's teeth. So you always have a sense when you're doing a picture like this of where the lightest light is and where the darkest dark is. So, and you save that. So that bit there is going to be, can you guess what that is? That'll be Bruce's label. Um, and right at the end, I'll be putting the writing on Bruce's label. So notice if you look very carefully at Bruce, the um, fins are blue on the top and then cream underneath. So I'm just making sure that that's really clear on the picture. And now Tiger's wonderful nose gets the treatment. Not being too fussy about um, perfect lines because these toys are perfect as they are but they're not like they've just walked off the shelf of a shop. They are really inviting and loved and soft. So I really love the, um, the visible lines of the pencil and how they make the toys feel. They really give them a bit of character and texture. And they seem to work very well with the ink. So these pens will slightly uh, slightly dim down the ink, the black. So I can use that quality. So if I want a, 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 one, of, one of the black lines to be really obvious, I make care, take care not to go over it with the pencil. But if I want to knock it back a bit, like that seam that I've just covered, then I can use the pencil over it. And um, it means as I was saying, you get the sort of slightly or a slight opportunity to adjust that ink. So I'm just trying to imagine Tiger with no stripes and make sure that those big shapes are right. And I think Tiger's probably got a bit of shadow that's going to come under here, but for now I'll just block that in as cream as a sort of good approximation. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect, just has to be close enough. So you might um, you might see that flash of green was for Tiger's splendid label, but I think we might save that till later. And I've got a really good pink here. I'm trying not to make Tiger look as though he's wearing lipstick. That'll be toned down later. And uh, there's, so they're both quite different colours inside their mouth. Bruce is quite a gingery colour. I love this pen. It's a really useful pencil. It's a really useful colour. A lot of, um, dogs have got this ginger colour in their fur. So later I will use that white and tone down some of the um, colours. Right, blocking in the blue. So Bruce is a really beautiful, almost two-tone blue. And so what I'm doing here is I'm putting the kind of darker element of the blue in. And later I will add a different colour over the top. So I'm using this colour to do some rough modelling to put in the shadows behind the creases. Again, just like the tiger, not too worried about visible pencil lines. They just add character. They show that it hasn't just been dropped in by a computer. quite quick really isn't it? Amazing how how quickly it starts to come alive once you put those big areas of colour and uh, the good thing about blocking in colour like this is that the um, once the main areas are coloured in you've got something to judge the other colours against so it can be very um, difficult to see 
what colour um, a particular area is if it's next to another strong colour and they kind of bounce off each other and distort each other in your brain. So um, if you have a very dark colour it can make the colours next to it look lighter than they really are. So you have to be quite careful with that and that's a, that's a good reason to do this blocking in all over the picture um, rather than just doing one area and moving on to the next. So if you do it like this you keep the whole picture kind of going and ticking over and moving forward at the same rate. And I'm just looking for hints of folds and uh, putting in some shadows. So these toys are really kind of lit from above. Now I'm putting this white on under Bruce. Bruce's underbelly isn't really white but it is a cooler colour I would say. So the white is serving a purpose and um, I will tone it down later. Looking at that label there is a little flash of white showing underneath where it's folded up. I think there might be two labels one on top of the other. Now Bruce's wonderful teeth are going in and I can use this white as well to soften some edges. So I can tone down some of the black line if I want to with that white pencil and I can show some of the form. So by doing this what I'm trying to do is show where the light is hitting. So there it is at hitting the top of Bruce's head, just running along and it helps give a sense of three dimension to these toys. And it smooths over some of the some of the pencil lines and um, I would say Bruce looks as though there's a bit of a velvety texture going on there so this white pencil has a lovely sort of slightly mashing effect on the blue and um, slightly chalky. We are going to do a bit more with Bruce's colouring but for now I'm just looking at the modelling, looking at the big shapes, not worrying about the detail, not worrying about stripes, just thinking about where the light is going to hit these forms and making sure that the shading, like those highlights, are all, all in the right places because that will make it read much better from a distance. So even if you think the toy looks quite, um, quite rough and ready, if you squint or step back it should look surprisingly close to the original as long as you've got those those key things like the, uh, the the sense of form that you get from having the lights carefully managed and those shadows really help those shadows underneath okay so let's have a look at those stripes then so I've got two reference photos and neither of them is perfectly like the shark that I'm drawing so I'm going to treat it like a jigsaw puzzle and get the ones I can see easily in first and then it gets to a little bit of more tricky measuring. So this is so uh, you know that ginger pencil I had earlier that's one I use a lot and this is another pencil I use a lot. It's a really nice grey. I wonder if you've got any favourite pencils. So in my head I'm trying to imagine if those stripes were wrapped around the shape of Tiger, how would they curve? So even if in the photo they might look quite straight, from this angle they would sort of curve around Tiger. And I'm looking very carefully at where they join so you can see that one crosses over the middle gill and then joins down at the front of the 
thin. And this next one slightly starts slightly ahead of the top dorsal fin. And then I'm going to curve it very slightly. Um, and if it's not curved, it will make Bruce look as though um, that side is flat. So it's really important to think ahead of those when you're when you're wrapping something around, a bit like as if you're wrapping elastic bands around it and see how they would go into curves. So now I'm looking very carefully before I commit with a pencil, I'm looking up at both the photos, see what I can learn about where those stripes sit. And I'm doing the stripes, you might notice those stripes are quite a lot thinner than um, the stripes in the picture. And that's because I'm kind of leaving myself with a little bit of leeway to go either way. And this is a good trick to do with eyes too, if you use a, make the eye very slightly too small. If you're just doing a black, you know, if you're just doing maybe the pupil or a black eye. If you make it slightly small to start with, then as the picture progresses, you might get a better idea of where that eye, if it needs to be adjusted slightly. And um, so it's the same with these tiger stripes. Right, there we go, that's the tiger stripes all on. Now this pen is a Uni Posca pen and I would never go straight onto the paper with this because it's um, juicy and it's ink, so it's not going to rub out and it really does stand out. So this is where I can put those stitches in where Bruce had post dog surgery. And I will um, go over those stitches with pencil later so they won't look quite so bright and coarse. So a lot of this white pen will be um, coated in pencil afterwards. It dries ever so quickly, so that's fine. Um, but it's a really great way to pick out highlights. I really want those teeth to show. Let us be in no doubt as to Bruce's fierceness. There we go. It's quite small. You can see from the size of the nib and my fingers how small this picture is. It's only A5, which is half a sheet of A4. So there's quite a lot of information to get in there. And try and strike a balance between explaining your subject and hinting at it. And that's what I'm trying to do with those teeth. I haven't drawn every individual tooth. And here, you'll remember I mentioned about toning down those lines. I think that outline is a little bit too heavy. So I'm just toning it down with a white pen and um, adding a bit of texture while I'm there. Lovely. Right then, Bruce, what next? Looking at the picture, looking for which areas catch the light areas have got a little bit of edge showing where I could show some texture. So I'm not going to go over the whole toy with this, just little areas where they catch the light and um, the viewer's eye will just fill in the rest. It's very clever how that happens. You give the viewer a few clues and they feel like they know the object even if you haven't explained every bit. So now, given that I'm going to put some texture on, but not over the whole of Bruce's body, I'm just trying to focus that texture on the areas where the light would hit, where I want it to be light. And also I'm toning down that top line. Because if you look at things, really, they don't have lines around them at all. If you look at a, a box or a cup or whatever you've got in front of you, a pencil, the edge is um, is really just a join between one area of colour and another. And um, using the lines I think gives these uh, toy portraits a nice kind of characterful, slightly um, 
cartoony look. But I have to stay away from just doing outlines. And it's also quite a good way, because I've got that black there, I can overlap the white onto it and show really clearly that there is some texture. Don't want to get too carried away though. So I'm just trying to show there that fin, the way it sort of bulges and catches the light. Very good for showing bulges, this pen. And uh, these, uh, these, as I said before, these textured bits will be not as, um, not as, it's like a titanium white, really, really bright white, but they'll all be blurred over later to make them look as though they're just, hopefully, just like the toys. At the top of that label, just where it catches the light. Now let's give Tiger the treatment. Come on then Tiger, time for your highlights. So although I do leave a few gaps between the um, stripes in general, I'm treating it as big forms and just thinking about where the light would go. Um, and it's a great way to bring those flat shapes into 3D land. Just highlighting where the light will hit them. I haven't really uh, done any shadows on the bodies at all. The shadows are all just on the on the ground underneath them. But later I will do a tiny bit of shading just to kind of help round off that form. It's called turning the form. Um, but for now, this pen's doing a pretty good job of showing the rounded ed nature of those forms. So I'm looking, looking at the shape of um, Tiger's kind of the toy equivalent of an eye socket. Often those, uh, those eyes are slightly dipped in and so the fur around them catches the light. I'm looking for clues like that on the pictures. And right at the end I'm going to put Tiger's highlight on his eye and you'll see it's amazing how that brings him to life and makes it shiny. There we go, right along the top of the head, just where it catches the light and that bit there. Not too much. I'm not just fading it all the way down at the sides, focusing very much towards the edge. And uh, that's a good tip for making something really look quite round doesn't uh, the the gradient the, the the rate of change of the um, highlight or shadow is quite steep so you can see it's light there just a little bit down into the tail give it that rounded feeling if you squint you might be able to see where that's going but uh, yeah, Tiger is going to be toned down as well. I get those. Um, I think they might be stitches, stitch teeth. I wonder what happened when Bruce was battling that dog. Do you think Tiger sat back and let Bruce take the punishment? <laughs> And uh, there we go, I'm just using that pen to lighten that black line so it's not quite so heavy and eye-catching. 
and here as well I think that's a bit heavy that was a a bit of an oversight when I was doing the inking again it's not going to be perfect but it just stops it jumping jumping forward into your consciousness as you look at the picture right then have a quick check with the mount make sure they look good yeah and try and decide what to do next now I'm imagining them in the frame what's missing what would what would improve them and you can keep stepping back and looking at your picture it's good to step back sometimes right I think these stripes need a bit of fattening up they're too light and too thin so I'm going to go in with this chocolate brown pencil it's a very cool brown beef up tiger stripes a little bit so looking very carefully at where they are dark and how wide they are varying that edge and then tracing again tracing around the form you can see that's much more proportionate with tigers stripes but because i was quite light before i can do some slight fine tuning at, at this point depending on where i emphasize the shading I think that's almost a Y shape there so really this is just that icing on the cake the uh, the surface pattern and um, shouldn't really make much of a difference to whether this looks like tiger or not but of course just like any details they have to be right so they have to catch your eye for all the right reasons now skip forward a little bit so that I can show you this turquoise pencil so this is a trick called optical mixing so I'm toning down that white and putting another layer over the top of the blue so I've got a kind of sky blue underneath and then using this turquoise instead of just picking a colour a single colour that is the colour for Bruce by using two colours like this I've got far more richness and vitality to the colouring and this is called optical mixing because what happens is in your eyes in your in your brain as a viewer you mix those colours and this is what uh, if you've ever heard of the pointillists so uh, Georges Seurat was um, sort of a, along with the Prussian impressionists that sort of time he was um, doing these kind of scientific in inverted commas discoveries about colour and um, experimenting with optical mixing so instead of just mixing the oil paints on the um, palette, he would put them in as spots. But you can do it, so there's different ways of doing it. You can do it by just laying on layers. So you can build up paintings in layers and you can do exactly the same with the pencil. And building them up in layers of different colors gives it that lovely, um, makes it sing, I think the pencil equivalent of singing. Now we can go in with the grey and just show those battle scars and Bruce's immense bravery. I'd like to have seen the dog. There we go. Not uh, bit like when you're drawing hair I'm not really stressing about doing every stitch just doing some uh, some hints of stitches in the right general area going in the right general direction and the viewers brain will fill in the rest 
called inferring. The viewer's brain will infer it. Okay, so a last bit of toning down here, just making sure it's the right value. And, uh, and the white, again, it gives it a, it blends it slightly, so it's not completely. You can see very clearly that you could, you've still got two colours underneath. And the, but the white pen is very useful for um, blending in those rather sharp looking um, points of fluff. So really looking at the fine details now, just trying to make sure that bits that uh, aren't supposed to jump out don't jump out. And um, just trying to fine tune cream pen here. So this is the same colour that um, we used originally. So it's the colour of the underneath and it's um, really good for knocking back. It's nice. It's uh, one of those, I think because of the pigment varying, different pencils um, lay their colour down more effectively and this cream pen is nice and easy to, to draw with. It really lays its colour down well. So you can see it's made quite a difference to those white speckles and now they just look like slightly bobbly toy not like stars i couldn't miss that tiger has a wonderful green label i'll show you the reference photo there we go can you see that green label it's green on the top bit of the label so i'm going to go back to the drawing and just color that label really nice I've got a lovely bright green here so I've put the picture in a frame just to help me judge where the edges need to be of the title okay so there's tiger's green and also there is a, um, a bit of detail on the um, label of Bruce here I'm looking very closely to see what that is so it doesn't have to actually show the words but it needs to be in the right sort of design so here we go. I hope you can see. Oh, you need to be able to see what I'm drawing. There we are. Right. I'll zoom in. There we go. And I'm just doing the, the writing on the label. Like that. And now Bruce has a shiny eye. So I'm going to get my Posca pen. Here we are. So this is a really nice pen. It's I don't know if you can hear. It's got liquid inside, and you see so you, they're really. You need to shake them when you use them, and also um, ne I would never put this straight on the picture. So it's a really good idea if you're using something like this or the ink pen. Always test it on a sheet of paper first, just to make sure. Occasionally they go a little bit blobby. Right, and let's turn the camera around. There we are and zoom in that's very simple but it makes all the difference for the highlight okay so there we go light is coming from here and i'm going to put that highlight just there and suddenly tiger has opened that eye right so last minus one is the title do we have a message from zali in the chat thing on about the title yeah. okay so i'm going to do bruce part tiger so i'm going to open to the person who was asking about using this ink here we go and oh before i get the ink out i'm just going to use a pencil to check that i've got these words fitting perfectly because um, here's a top tip when you want to draw a straight line on a picture can you see I've got my fingers here and I'm just tracking them along the bottom and so it saves me using a, a ruler and it means I get a really nice straight line which I can rub out afterwards and now Bruce and Tiger so Tiger has got a G so I know that needs to go under the line so if I put the heart in the middle there. We've got Bruce. 
just making sure they sit. There we go. Right, so that's the plan. Now I'm going to get out my ink here. So I'm going to open the ink. Now it does have a dropper, got a, like a squirty dropper there, a pipette. You can see that ink coming out. But actually what I do is I just dip my pen in but I'm very careful, I'll switch back to the drawing board so you can see, I'm always very careful to use this paper and I always also have a piece of kitchen paper ready in case. Okay, so normally I do the writing at the beginning in case it goes wrong, so there is a slight risk that this writing will, will blob and if it does, I'll do your picture again, Bruce. Um, Lonnie. worry too much about getting this writing perfect because perfection isn't really why we keep toys like this and it's not really why we do handmade hand drawn pieces of art we're after character and that sort of thing rather than perfection so I'm not going to make a complete mess of it but um, I'm not going to stress if it's not perfect. There we go. Just show you the signing because I think I'm going to need to rub out this line under here and I'm going to wait till the ink is dry. But it's really useful having it in the frame because I can see that I've got a nice neat space here. So I'll just check if I've remembered how to write my name. Yeah. Go. Okay, and I'm just going to sign it down here. There we go. Okay. So there is Bruce and Tiger. So finally, I'm going to use this putty rubber. This is where it really comes into its own, but you can knead it into a very small point like that and I can use it to rub out the pencil line very precisely. So I'm rubbing out the pencil under the ink and not disturbing the pencil on the signature because this allows me to be really precise with that rubber. So it's great for rubbing out. You can even use it to rub as a drawing tool. So you can rub through graphite with it. And last step is to colour in this heart and a little reminder about optical mixing. So I'm going to use these two colours, they're the two colours that I used in this shark and instead of just putting one flat colour on you'll see, I hope, that if I layer them it just gives a really nice kind of vibrant approach and this is what we use you can use this in all sorts of painting as well as pencil so instead of just mashing the colors together on the palette you can put one color down let it dry and then another color it's just a little detail but i think it brings it to life there we go so bruce and tiger all ready for zali and next week we'll be talking a little bit about happy accidents. And as I use an ink pen, I'm no stranger to those. Right, well, I hope that was useful and I'd love to see what you've managed and please join us on the live stream. It's a lot of fun, um, very arty, um, and there's some calligraphy and other exciting things. So we'd love to hear from you. Um, we're on on a Wednesday night at seven o'clock. Okay, take care, happy drawing, bye.